demonstration and to join us talking about the real dire situation and how it relates to us here is Israeli Consul General Ido Aharoni. How are you, Consul General? Thank you. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. How likely is a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip? It is certainly a possibility. Uh, the way it works in Israel is that the Israeli cabinet, which is the commander in chief, is uh, authorizing the Israel Defense Forces to recruit uh, soldiers. Uh, and then, as the next uh, sequence, they give the green light. The green light was not given yet. The uh, authorization to uh, recruit 40,000 reservists was given about 11 days ago. Uh, the Israel Defense Forces is doing what it is known for, uh, uh, for doing, and that is to prepare for all eventualities. Ground operation is one of them. Consul General Al-Haroni, the, the ceasefire seemed like it might stick, but uh, then uh, Hamas didn't uh, didn't come up with its end of the agreement. What what change did that make in terms of the the tenor of this dispute? Uh, obviously, things escalated in the last twenty four hours. Look, Hamas has uh, failed miserably in uh, reaching their operational goals. Uh, over one thousand rockets were fired. Uh, the number of fatalities and casualties is minimal in Israel. That doesn't mean that we are uh, not right in what we do, of course. People have a tendency to look at the size that has the military might and conclude wrongly uh, that the other side is by definition the underdog. This is exactly the opposite. The fact that Hamas is the weaker side doesn't make them right. It makes them dead wrong. Uh, Hamas is... Um, committed to the destruction of the state of Israel, and in their eyes, every Israeli woman, every Israeli child, every Israeli in general is a legitimate target, and this is something we cannot tolerate. How has the, uh, the dome, the Iron Dome missile defense system changed? It was amazing, you know, that especially the very first day when those missiles were coming into Israel, and it was like every missile was deflected. How has that changed um, defense, politics? Well, the Iron Dome system, which was uh, developed by uh, Israelis with uh, generous uh, funding from the administration, uh, is a game changer. It is a game changer because uh, the ability to intercept in midair uh, several rockets that are being fired uh, launched at Israel simultaneously provides us with a degree of uh, safety and security which is unprecedented. This doesn't mean that the rockets uh, do not disrupt life in Israel. And I have to tell you that in 11 days of intensive war between Israel and Hamas, the damage to Israel's economy could, can be estimated in the billions, not in the hundreds of millions, in the billions. Uh, we're losing money, businesses are losing money, um, the economy is affected a great deal. Uh, but nevertheless, in terms of our ability uh, to protect the lives of our people and to engage in what we call loss prevention, Iron Dome is definitely a game changer of the uh, of a strategic importance. Yeah, it's still going to be terrifying uh, whether the, the, you're talking about the people in Gaza or the people in the the Israeli cities. Just the ha having to rely on that technology as as successful as the Iron Dome has been when the the air raid sirens are sounding, when you're hearing those interceptions happening that changes the way people behave and and just is is over their heads as a, as a concern all the time uh, in your view what has to happen for for this conflict to be resolved not not a ceasefire but actually uh, some sort of agreement what 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 has to happen to change well, things it's hard to imagine a complete resolution western style with hamas uh, for this very simple reason that Hamas is committed to our destruction. If you read the Hamas charter, it's not about, uh, you know, developing and cultivating a, a productive uh, economy in Gaza uh, or a blooming, uh, you know, uh, environment. Uh, it's about the destruction of the state of Israel. And their view is uncompromising. And uh, so um, to discuss today the possibility of full, complete, idyllic reconciliation with Hamas, I think it's pretty much unrealistic. Uh, what we can talk about, and which is feasible, is a more uh, of a livable arrangement between us and the Palestinians that will, of course, include the full and complete acceptance of Hamas of the three benchmarks set by the international quartet, the international community. Uh, unless they recognize and accept those three benchmarks, they will still be regarded by much of the Western world 
as a terrorist organization, a brutal murderer of its own people in the first place. The three benchmarks are a full and complete recognition of all the past agreements that were signed, complete denunciation and renunciation of terrorism, and, of course, the recognition of Israel's right to exist, exist as a national homeland for the Jewish people. Do you ever see that happening? And everybody we're talking to, Israeli Consul General to New York, Ido Aharoni, it seems that, you know, Hamas has just dug in. I mean, they were offered the ceasefire. Um, Consul General, they said, no, sorry, no ceasefire. Do, do you ever see them agreeing to any of those conditions? No, and I'll tell you uh, something that even goes beyond that point. Uh, we suspect that Hamas is actually purposefully perpetuating the suffering of its own people because they believe it puts pressure, Western pressure, on Israeli government. I think that is criminally irresponsible, reckless, and negligent. Well, thank you very much. Um, Consul General from Israel to New York, Ido Aharoni, great to have you with us, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ido.